Hey guys, it's Shadow Heat here. How's everyone doing today? So, for today's video, I'm going to show you guys the secret characters that are hidden in the game files throughout all of the Halo games. All the main Halo games. So, some of these I've covered in previous videos, but I wanted to basically cover everything in every Halo game and just make one big video of uh, every secret character that I'm aware of, at least in Halo. So, starting with Halo 1, one of the most famous ones that we're starting off with is the Engineers. Now these are actually cut characters in Halo 1 that don't actually come back officially in gameplay or in any Halo game until Halo 3 ODST and Halo Reach as well. And I believe they appear in Halo Wars as well, but um, we're going with the main mainline Halo games for this. But anyways, these engineers, they were they're almost fully functional in Halo 1's game files and they could still be spawned in on the mission, um, the silent cartographer. And as you can see, this is uh, what they look like. And of course, they can still be spawned in in anniversary graphics, but in anniversary graphics, they just show up as these black cubes. And well, that's all they are in anniversary graphics. And a lot of stuff in classic graphics in Halo 1 that don't really exist in anniversary graphics, they just show up as black cubes. So that's basically it for characters in Halo 1. Uh, next, we move on to Halo 2, starting with another famous one which is the Flood Juggernaut. The Flood Juggernaut is a cut flood form, a really powerful and really huge flood form in Halo 2 that well was also you know pretty much complete uh, almost. It even has like working AI as well that you can restore and it's functional in gameplay as well. But alas the Flood Juggernaut was cut from Halo 2 for, well, I don't really know the exact reason. I, I heard like just some of it was still incomplete, that Bungie didn't have time to finish the rest of it, or they didn't really um, have time to implement the Flood Dragonaut into any counters in Halo 2's missions. So it was cut from the final game. And it still exists in anniversary graphics, except it's, uh, it's an untextured model instead in anniversary graphics, but it's pretty cool that it actually still exists in some way. I thought it would just be like either nothing or a black cube originally, but there it is. And then Halo 2 has another uh, cut unused creature called the Space Jellyfish, or in the game files it's actually called the Space Blimp. This creature here is actually supposed to be, uh, it's only on the map the Arbiter, and it's, it's just supposed to be like hovering around in the gas clouds outside. And it's just supposed to act as an ambient creature on this planet. Just, you know, the, the local wildlife. I know it's like a gas planet, but it's supposed to be like a, almost like a balloon kind of creature that just kind of hovers around and just, I don't know, eats, eats like the gas in the atmosphere or something like that. It, it, it's just it's supposed to be like the equivalent of birds on this particular planet. And just like the Flood Juggernaut, it does also have a motto in anniversary graphics, which actually, even though it's like untextured, it actually looks better in anniversary graphics compared to in a uh, classic Halo 2 graphics. But that is the uh, Space Jellyfish that's also cut and unused in Halo 2 and also less functional than the Flood Juggernaut. The last thing we'll be taking a look at in Halo 2 is the Shielded Flood Carrier variant. It is just a flood carrier, but it's a different variant of the flood carrier. Uh, it's the same one, but it carries a jackal shield. And that's basically the only difference there is to this version of the flood carrier. It's the exact same as the flood carrier. It'll still explode when you shoot it, and it'll still spawn flood infection forms when it explodes. But it's just carrying a jackal shield, and I guess that offers it extra protection. Um, so, you know, these were never officially included in you know, any Halo games, they're just cut or unused in game files. But my guess is that lore-wise, they're like infected jackals, or at least they were kind of like partially made from jackals, because that's partially how carriers originate. So that might be why they still have like some jackal shields, because you saw, we, we see some flood combat forms that still have like elite shields, for example. Anyways, uh, next for Halo 3, we have the Banger Infection form. Now before we get into this, I do want to quickly mention that the Shield of Flood Carry in Halo 2 does actually exist in Halo 3 as well, but the Jackal Shield is not a separate weapon, so they don't have it. But anyways, moving on to the Banger Infection Form. They are these Infection Forms here. They look like regular Infection Forms, except when you shoot them, 
they explode in huge explosions, <laughs> huge like plasma explosions, and they are very, very dangerous and deadly. And you know, just shooting them alone, like in close proximity, can cause a lot of damage to your shields. And if too many of them attack you, even on easy difficulty, they will they will destroy you pretty quickly. So they are very dangerous infection forms. Next up in Halo 3, we have a very odd character, quote unquote. This is a biped, and in the game files, it is literally called My Balls. And it is just these two spheres here, one of which is basically a reflection sphere. And these also exist in pretty much all the Halo games. Uh, and in some Halo games, it's named differently. Uh, I believe in Halo Reach, it's actually named Reflection and Lighting Test or just reflection lighting test or something like that, it just, it, it varies. But these are just basically test, used for testing purposes. Although in Halo 3, it's interesting that this particular version of, you know, the reflection and lighting test uh, is actually playable. It can wield weapons, it can shoot weapons, it can't melee, but it can shoot. And it uh, it's a flying biped, as in you, you can control and you can fly as well. You could just, you know, it's, it's like playing as the Forge Wander. You could just fly up and down and stuff like that. It is, uh, you know, that's actually pretty a pretty usable character. <laughs> but obviously it's unused. It's only meant for testing purposes. Next up we have the Cheap Spartans and Elites. So if you remember the original classic main menu of Halo 3, there are some Spartans and multiplayer Elites that show up on the main menu. Well, you may think they're just regular Spartans, or they're Master Chief, or they're regular Elites and stuff like that, but they're actually very unique and special versions of those bipeds. As in, well, they're called Cheap Spartans and Cheap Elites in the game files, and the difference is that they, they generally don't flinch when you attack them. In fact, they're totally invincible, and they have no shields as well. They, they're basically stripped down Spartans and Elites that don't really include all the same features and abilities as the regular multiplayer Spartans and Elites do. They're just purely meant to show to showcase on the main menu. And one unique thing is that these versions are actually the closest thing possible to the original models in Halo 3 until 343 updated them to the newer versions with the Halo line armors and undersuits. Unfortunately these don't exist anymore ever since the main menu was purged from MCC, so they're, they're completely gone. Next up we have another version of the Spartan biped called the Blue Menu Pretty Spartan. That's literally what it's called in the game files. And this version of Spartan is the one that appears on the main menu of the Halo 3 Mythic disc. The Mythic main menu use, apparently uses a different Spartan than the regular Halo 3 main menu. And to be honest, I don't know what the difference is. <laughs> Um, so here is the Spartan, and uh, apologies for the frame rate here, but he was having trouble recording it at the time. But yeah, I cannot tell any difference at all with this Spartan and the regular multiplayer Spartan. It doesn't look like it's higher detail or anything, it's just, it's just got a different name. And it's properties like, you know, no shields, invincible, they're all the same as the, uh, the cheap Spartans and Elites as well, so I don't know what the difference is with it, but it's there, it's named differently. Uh, next up, in Halo 3, we have a lot of unused birds <laughs> hidden in the game files that are basically cut and never used, such as the cockatoo bird, and, you know, it, it actually, some of these birds look pretty cool, and they're all fully animated too, they, you know, they could be used, they're just unused, uh, but next we have the guaira bird, I think. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, but again, another cool looking bird in Halo 3. And then after that, we have the Hornbill bird. Again, none of these birds, they're all fully functional. They just, none of them are used in any mission in Halo 3. They're just in the files, but just completely unused at all. And the last one that's unused is the small multi bird. And that's what it looks like. This one's a pretty uh, interesting looking bird. <laughs> there are some birds that are used in Halo 3 on some missions and multiplayer maps, but these are the ones that are not used anywhere. <laughs> All right, next up in Halo 3 ODST, 
you know, if MCC didn't exist on PC, then this would not, this category would even exist. But um, when ODST came to MCC on PC, 343 actually added the Forge monitor from Halo 3 into uh, pretty much all the maps of, um, well, I think all the maps, or at least some of them on ODST. And, you know, it, it, it suggests that maybe like someday we might actually see Forge on ODST, which would be really cool to have. But obviously that's not possible at the moment, or it doesn't exist at the moment. But the Forge monitor exists and you can play as the Forge monitor in ODST. But that, does, that did not exist before on a 360 version. That is newly added by 343. All right, so that's it for ODST. Uh, moving on to Halo Reach. So whenever you see a cutscene that features Noble Team with their helmets off, you may think that their heads are attached to their bodies, but that's actually not the case. Whenever you see their faces in cutscenes, that is basically, their, their heads are separate bipeds. Like not just separate models, but separate bipeds entirely, separate characters, and they're just attached to their headless bodies in the cutscenes. If you were to remove the, if you were to like, you know, get rid of these bipeds, then the actual bodies in the cutscenes, when they're supposed to be helmetless, well, they would be headless. And you could, likewise, you could do the uh, reverse, which is spawn their heads, just the heads, just the head bipeds, and this is what they look like. And they're meant to be, you know, high quality, high detail, you know, models for their heads. But Bungie just, I guess, it was easier for them just to make them bipeds as well. Just, but like, the head is the only part there of the model and you know this is uh these are the faces the heads that you see in all the cutscenes and that's uh that's what they look like when <laughs> without their bodies kind of reminds me of those that one goosebumps movie like the, the with the masks the halloween masks something that fly around at the end or something like that i don't know if you guys ever saw that goosebumps movie way back but anyways so next up was uh, a lot of cut creatures or unused creatures in Halo Reach, just like the birds in Halo 3, starting with the hawk here. And then some of these I don't, I'm not entirely positive if they're used or unused at all. Like the cockroach here, it might be used on some missions, but honestly I don't, I can't actually tell if they are, because they're really tiny and really hard to see and it's really easy to not notice. So, so for some of these creatures in Halo Reach, feel free to correct me. I'm wrong about whether they're used or not, but that's what the cockroach looks like. We also have a certain type of fish called the GAR fish. I know some Halo Reach maps do have like fish in the water, but this fish, I don't think I've ever seen anywhere on any map. And I think it'll be easy to notice it with how huge this fish is. <laughs> um, yeah, if, if this was actually used anywhere in game, I would notice, I, I would like to think at least. But yeah, th these are called the gar fish, I think. And they are big elephant nosed fish or long nosed fish, I guess. Um, next up, we have the Halo 3 rat returning to Halo Reach. Again, I don't know this appears anywhere in the game at all, but it's the exact same rat from Halo 3, as far as I can tell. Um, and I believe, I don't believe it's used anywhere, but I could be wrong about that again. A lot of these are really small creatures that if they do appear, they might like barely be noticeable or, or barely used. And the last one is the Raven. Uh, again, another one I don't believe I've seen anywhere in gameplay at all, but it is there in the game files. And um, yeah, it's uh, another pretty interesting bird. But again, I don't know if it's used or not, but I've definitely never seen that before personally. And last but not least, for Halo Reach, we have these cut creatures, which there are some pictures out there on the internet, like the space squirrel and the space porcupine. They don't exist in the game anymore, like the models aren't there, but there are still references, and some of them even have tags in the games, but it's just they're invisible if you spawn them. They just don't exist. But that's what they look like, apparently. Next up, moving on to Halo 4. For the first thing, we have the octopus. It is called an octopus, but it is really just another test object, just like the uh, the reflection uh, spheres in Halo 3. But in Halo 4, this, again, an it's another biped, another playable character, sort of. And it's just a tiny white cube, and that's it. That's the octopus of Halo 4. It, uh... 
Well, like I said, it's just another test object, but it is sort of playable. By itself, if I just play without any modifications, I actually can't move around in it. I can only look around, but I can't move around, I can't pick up weapons either. But if I just change the model of Master Chief to the cube, then I can more freely move around, but it's uh, that's basically all there is to it. Next up, with Dr. Tilson in Halo 4, her biped's uh, very interesting in that it has three variants. It has a regular variant, but if you notice, when she gets disintegrated by the composer, she uh, goes through a couple of phases, and each of those phases that she goes through is another variant of her biped. And those variants are all fully usable, fully playable, and fully animated in cutscenes as well. So you could change her variant to any of those variants, and it will still work in cutscenes. And it just looks ridiculous, but um, yeah, that they they work. So this is her variant where she's just like only like muscle and nerve and bone, I guess. And then her last variant is where she's just a skeleton, and it's a full skeleton. It's not just her face, because you only see her skeleton face in a cutscene, but you can see her her entire body has a skeleton model. Just like with the uh, the muscle and nerve model, and <laughs> it, it gets more ridiculous with, with each version that you use. But yeah, as a skeleton, it's just you, you can almost see like the emotion that it's trying to make on the facial expression, even though there's no face on the skeleton technically. <laughs> but next up, when Halo 4, it's not really a character. I guess it depends how you what you want to call a character. But the Scarab is in Halo 4. This Halo 4 Scarab is actually the Halo Reach Scarab, which itself was built off of the Halo 3 Scarab. But technically, since Scarabs are like giant hunters, I guess I wanted to consider it a, a character. But, you know, just to show you guys really quickly. Next up, we have the Halo 3 Sentinel in Halo 4. That's a, probably a leftover uh, object. But, you know, it, it is here in the game. It's technically a scenery object now, it's not actually a biped. But,. You know, it was a character in Halo 3, a biped in Halo 3, but this is what it looks like in Halo 4 now. And next up we have a Cortana placeholder model, which as its name would imply, it was a placeholder during development for the actual Cortana. And well, this is what it looks like. <laughs> Very simple placeholder model for Cortana. That's, uh, that's it. It's just a scenery object again though. Uh, I remember correctly and the last thing in Halo 4 a very cool thing a really fun thing to, uh, to see is that Noble team from Halo Reach uh, their models all still exist in Halo 4 each member of Noble team except for George because George in Halo Reach was actually a separate model he had his own special biped whereas all the other members of Noble team they're all the same Spartan biped just with different variants for each member of Noble team so yeah, in Halo 4, you can have five of the six members of Noble Team uh, with you in your squad in Spartan Ops, or with modding important to other missions in Campaign or Spartan Ops as well. And you know, they um, you can just give them the regular Spartan AIs and they will fully assist you and join you. So, you know, Master Chief or your Spartan 4 in Halo 4 can be assisted <laughs> by Noble Team. And, you know, they're all left over from Halo Reach, so that's why they're there. The last game we'll be taking a look at is Halo 5. And we only have one thing we can look at for Halo 5, because modding for Halo 5 is... Uh, for Halo 5 campaign is not possible at the moment. So we can only do what we can find with glitches and out-of-map glitches. So if you get the map on a mission to breaking, and you pr pretty much skip to the very end and not load anything, and you get to the, uh, the final cutscene room, well, the cutscene won't load which uh, allows us to see this bright light in the middle and get up close where we will see a giant Cortana statue a Halo 4 Cortana statue here which is pretty much a placeholder in this cutscene for uh, for the actual Halo 5 version of the Cortana but I'm guessing at some point in development they decided they didn't want to use in-engine cutscenes for Halo 5 or at least for some of Halo 5 so they just went with a CGI cutscene for um, for this mission's cutscene at least, and used that version of Cortana in that cutscene. But the placeholder is still left behind here, and you can actually see it. I don't know if it's an Easter egg that was intentionally left behind, but 
it is uh, it is here nonetheless. But yeah, so there you guys have it. Those are all the secret characters that I know of, at least, hidden throughout all the Halo games. If for some reason I missed something, a character in one of the Halo games, the main Halo games, feel free to let me know, let me know in the comments down below. But aside from that, if you enjoyed this video and found it to be interesting, then as always, make sure to leave a like. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Anything else you want me to check or look into, just let me know down below. But other than that, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel, and I will see you all next time. Bye, guys.